Hey everybody, I'm Dave. And I'm Johnny. And we're here from Documentary Brothers, presenting our new series, Beer for a Story. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be talking with my grandmother. So, here we go. You've been here over 50 years. <laughs> How did you meet him? He was a neighbor. Ken, really, his brother Harry and I are the same age. Ken's brother Harry and I are the same age. He was born in August, I was born in December. And he was with a group of kids that we, that all played together. Boys and girls played together at the same time. We, we played um, um, hide and go seek, kick the stick, you know, kick it and everyone hides and you run back, you tin pan alley, kick the can. And they, if they would see you, they would catch you. And if someone came and kicked the can before he could get back to it, then all the kids could st scatter again. And we played football, and uh, anyway, Ken was Harry's older brother, and he was cute. <laughs> His mom and dad liked me from the very beginning. We were very good friends. He was always in our house. I was Harry was always at our house. I was always up at their house, and Ken had a motorcycle. He was 16, <laughs> and we, we just became fascinated with each other, and Next thing you know, we're married and having kids and all around the place. But his mother always said I was the daughter they never had. If Ken and I had an argument, she always stood up for me. <laughs> so they were they were really nice people. They really were. I wish Lynn's children could have known her. She was a really nice lady. But she died in eighty five. So yeah, and let's see, I rode motorcycle, uh, Ken had his motorcycle, which was a Harley, uh, 74 cc, I don't remember, 1200 cc, it was a big dress with windshield net, and he could change it from a full dress motorcycle to a cut down version with a little pillion pad in like half an hour. So if he was not being a good boy and the cops were looking for a big blue Harley, he'd go up with his cut down chop version with the tiger teeth on the side and small seat and well that ain't him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did that. Been there, done that. But anyway, he got me a motorcycle. But after Lynn was born, we decided that uh, having three children, <laughs> if one of us got hurt, the other one's going to have to watch them all the time. <laughs> so we got rid of the motorcycles then. We settled down into raising kids. And like I said, Ken worked at the mill in about 1967. He had gotten burnt pretty bad at the mill um, on his side. And that was just it. He... It was just too much. He says, I'm not going to work there anymore. And he went into business for himself. Uh, he had always toyed with the idea of being a welder, doing things. So he decided that ornamental iron was his thing to do. And we found a shop that he could make into a shop. And that worked out pretty good for a couple years. Gave us nice living. We were able to come and go as we wanted because he was his own boss. And I'm trying to think, it was around 70, 72, decided to expand. So, set 1972, we had the shop and we built on to it. And as we put got the concrete put in, Ken built all the beams for the different things and we had a crane to set it and Tony was 12 years old running the crane while mom was on one side hanging off of a ladder and dad was on the other side hanging off a ladder he was welding it I was just keeping it in place with the clamps and this kid knew if he made the wrong move <laughs> he was going to be in trouble <laughs> but he did the kids all helped out at the shop and uh and we made we made a nice living out of it. We probably could have gone bigger and done better, but that's the way Ken wanted it, and that's how we lived. And we have 
everything that we wanted. You don't need a lot of money all the time to live. But that's what he did for a living. And I could weld and paint and do everything. I didn't enjoy the welding. I didn't like it when he would use the big cut-off saw and the sparks would fly all over the place and I'd have little burns, you know, like <laughs> on my arms because I had to hold the piece there for him. But I, it was just he and I. It was a mom and pop. And we, we just made it work. It was good that way. I miss him. I miss the fights. <laughs> Arguments, not fights. Can never hit me. Never. Many times he wanted to. <laughs> oh, every marriage is like that. I mean, anyone that says they don't have an argument with their wife, they're lying. <laughs> Uh, let's see. He passed away. It'll be eight years next month. Unbelievable. Eight years. <laughs>